Eugene, Oregon is about to host the NCAA Track and Field Championships, and Oregon has a total 24 athletes that are going to be competing to be the best in the entire country. We're going to jump in with the men's side first, then the women's. Follow along with this thread as we preview all of the Oregon Ducks that are going to be competing this week. Trackandfieldnews.com developed a top 10 for each event that I will be referencing throughout this video to show where these ducks rank among the competition going into this week. The Oregon track and field team also did a gorgeous photo shoot with everyone competing that is on their Instagram, and I will also be sharing those incredible photos. Let's start with the Oregon men, where the team is projected to finish second place with a lot of work to be done if they want to upset the heavy favorite, LSU. On Wednesday, the only chance for Oregon to score points will be from the men's javelin throw. Dalton Rasmussen finished fourth at the Pac-12 Championships and then eighth at the West Preliminary, so he is not projected to finish in the top ten. Moving on to Thursday, we will see the completion of the men's decathlon where Oregon hopes to score points with Max Vollmer. After winning the Pac-12 Championship, Vollmer is one of 24 students competing and he's currently projected for a seventh place finish so keep an eye on Vollmer throughout the first two days. Friday, we'll see the rest of Oregon's men battle, starting with the 4x100 meter relay team. This group finished second at the Pac-12 Championships and then eighth at the West Prelims. Oregon is currently projected to finish 10th, which means they are on the bubble to make the finals. With only the top eight teams able to reach the finals, watch for this Oregon relay team on Wednesday to see if they qualify. The next event is the 1500 meter race where Oregon has three entries. Reed Brown came fifth at the Pac-12 Championships and then fourth at the prelims, but he's on the bubble to make the final race, so for watch for his semifinal on Wednesday. James West finished fourth at the Pac-12 Championships and then third at the prelims. West is projected to finish in the top 10. Despite Cooper Tier winning the Pac-12 Championship in this race, he elected not to run the 1500 for the NCAAs. Instead, Cole Hawker, who skipped on this race during the Pac-12s, qualified by winning the prelim, and now he is one of the favorites to win an NCAA title. Heading over to the field, Oregon has two entries in the triple jump. Isaiah Griffith finished seventh during the Pac-12 championship and then fifth during the prelims. Griffith is projected to be right on the bubble for the top 10, so he will need some good jumps to score points for UO. Oregon will also bring Emmanuel Ihemeje, who is the Pac-12 silver medalist, finishing a close second behind USC's Jordan Scott. Ihemeje actually beat Scott during the prelims and is now the projected favorite for the NCAA title, so keep an eye on that battle. Heading back to the track, Oregon will run Jackson Messler in the 3,000-meter steeplechase. Messler is the Pac-12 champion in this event and came in fourth place during the prelims. Messler is only projected 8th place despite his recent success, so that gives Oregon an opportunity to steal some points on Friday. In the 100 meter dash, we will see Michael Williams, who finished 2nd at the Pac-12 Championship behind USC's Devontae Burnett, but then won at the West Prelims. This sets up Williams as one of the favorites this week. In the 800 meter race, Oregon has a pair of entries. Luis Peralta finished 4th at the Pac-12 Championship and then 6th at the West Prelims. Peralta is not expected to qualify for Friday's final, so pay attention to his semifinal race on Wednesday. Charlie Hunter will also be running the 800 meters after a silver medal at the Pac-12 Championship and then a fourth place finish at the West Prelims. Hunter is projected to finish fifth in the event, so he's in the mix for a title. In the 400 meter hurdles, you'll see Jonathan Harvey, who finished sixth at the Pac-12 Championship and then eighth at the West Prelims. Harvey's not expected to make Friday's final, so pay attention to Wednesday's semifinal, so if he can surprise us. Lastly, one of the most exciting races for Oregon fans is going to be the 5,000 meters, where Oregon has two entries that are projected to finish first and second. Cooper Tier finished second at the Pac-12 championship and then fourth place at the West Prelims. Cole Hawker won the Pac-12 title narrowly and then placed ninth at the West Prelims. The combination of Hawker and Tier are both favorites to win the NCAA title, with a strong chance for them to finish together at the top. That concludes all of the Oregon men's field with a total of 15 entries. Now let's jump over to the Oregon women, who as a team are projected to finish 8th. Thursday will give Oregon four chances to win NCAA titles, starting with a couple field events. In the javelin throw, Oregon has Lori Paredes, who finished second in the Pac-12 championship and then second at the West prelims. 
Paredes is projected to finish 7th in this event. The Ducks have two competitors in the long jump, starting with Risa Foster. Foster placed 2nd at the Pac-12 Championship and then 10th at the West Prelim. Foster is currently not projected to finish in the top 10 this week. Oregon also brings Pac-12 champion Eliza Hickey, who followed up by finishing 3rd at the prelims and is definitely among the favorites to win an NCAA title, currently projected to finish 5th. The last event to watch on Thursday will be the 10,000 meter race, where Carmela Cardama Baez will be one of the favorites. Baez won the Pac-12 championship in this race and then placed second at the West Prelims. She will have some tough competition, but Oregon fans could see an NCAA championship here. The final day of the NCAA championships on Saturday will have five more Oregon women competing. The women of Oregon will field a 4 by 100 meter relay team. The Ducks won the Pac-12 championship over USC and then finished second in the West prelims right behind USC. They are projected to place fifth. Two of the members on this relay team have also individually qualified to race in the 100 meters. Jasmine Reed finished seventh at the Pac-12 championship and then just barely qualified with a 12th place finish at the West prelims. She's not expected to be fast enough to qualify for the final, so pay attention to her semifinal race on Thursday. Kemba Nelson came in second place at the Pac-12 championship and second place at the West prelims, both right behind USC's T.T. Terry. Kemba Nelson will be one of the favorites in this race, but she is once again projected to finish second right behind Terry. The next race for Oregon will be the 3,000-meter steeplechase with Aneta Konyecek racing. Konyecek won the Pac-12 title for Oregon and then finished 6th at the West prelims. She is projected to finish 4th in this event, so that is another opportunity for an NCAA champion or a podium finish for Oregon. The last athlete to watch on Saturday is Dominique Ruotolo in the triple jump. Ruotolo won the Pac-12 championship in the triple jump and then came in 8th at the West prelims. Despite her Pac-12 title, Ruotolo is not expected to finish in the top 10 for this event. That is all nine of Oregon women that are vying for NCAA titles. Thanks for watching this preview of all the Oregon athletes competing this week. Stay tuned on my Twitter for updates on all of these performances, all the NCAA champions, in addition to previews before every single day's competitions.